Here we go again guys, this is episode 3 of Hammer and Spanner. In uh, this episode we will uh, look into some of the most crucial parts of this car. And uh, it will be the parts that I use as a driver, like the e-brake, the pedal box and some stuff. And uh, then we will look into the brain of the car, the ECU, what type of brand we're running and also the dash system. Uh, the current setup we're using now and also the one that we're changing to, to next year. So. Uh, the, we have some really good partners here and uh, I'm excited to show you this. So uh, let's get started. start off uh, with uh, some of the things I use as a driver. Uh, first off we have this. Uh, this is a, a Sparco steering wheel with uh, in suede. It's a 38 centimeter deep dish steering wheel. Uh, I actually have used this steering wheel in all my cars. This is the same one uh, I had when I uh, ran the 190 from street all the way to now. So it's uh, pretty worn out but uh, I kind of keep, keep it just for the hell of it, so uh, we might need to do a refurbish or maybe change the wheel in the future, but sometime maybe. Uh, behind that, uh, we're using a snap off, it's actually called that the brand, it's a Swedish brand. They do this type of snaps off, and uh, it's a really nice one. Been using this for a lot of years as well, still no glitch or anything failing on it, so really recommend this uh, setup. Uh, then we come to the steering column. Uh, this is one is really custom because uh, the car is actually converted from right hand drive to left hand drive because we bought the chassis back in England. Uh, I think it was in 2014. And uh, when we converted it, we had to do a steering column that worked. And uh, when we checked over the or original one, it was really hard to do a proper setup. So we ended up actually using a BMW E30 steering column. And then we used, uh, I think this actually is the input shaft for like a 188 differential for an E30. So <laughs> my friend uh, Special Svar helped us do this uh, uh, adapters to make it fit my snap off. And then we have a small uh, joint down there uh, that we have connected to the lower part of the stock steering column so a lot of custom going on there as well but uh, it's been working good it's a bit heavy but uh, I think that uh, E calls on steel design might fix that this winter more updates on that soon uh, then we go for the handbrake this is a SUV Motorsports uh, handbrake it's a hydro of course so it looks up the back calipers instead of the internal setup that was uh, their stock so it's a nice simple e-brake nice looking been working perfectly since the day we installed it so yeah it's a uh, definitely a good setup uh, i'm going to try to move the light a bit and uh, then we will try to check over the pedal box a bit so here we got it this is the standing pedal box that we use for this car. Uh, this is a Tilton 600 series pedal box with a three pedal assembly. This means you have a clutch, you have a brake and you have the throttle uh, pedal as well. As you can see we have two master cylinders for the brakes uh, this means that we have uh, one separate for the front brakes and one separate for the rear ones. Uh, and also you have this adjuster this is just the brake balance between the front brakes and the rear brakes. And this helps us that find that sweet spot when you want a, a certain balance for your driving style and uh, everyone has a different setup and I think it's, uh, 
it's pretty good to find it. Uh, needs still uh, some work for my taste, but uh, we'll see how uh, we go on with that for the next year. So I'm going to move back and show you how to adjust it. Uh, to adjust the brake balance between the front and the rear, we have this uh, small knob. And this is a very exact uh, way of doing it. So we kind of use this for the first setup to make sure we find a quite a good balance between the front and rear. But uh, then we leave it alone because it's easy to adjust it and not find your way back because it's uh, you can just turn way uh, round it around and it's hard to keep count. To make uh, faster adjustments on track, if you want one track where you maybe want more front brake than rear brake, we install this one. This is a Wheelwood uh, brake balancer valve. So this has small steps instead of uh, being completely without steps. So this is easy to make uh, fast adjustments to reduce the brake strength of the rear brakes. So pretty good, cool little setup. Uh, maybe not used it as much as I should, but uh, it's good to have it. So it's time to move over to the wiring system a bit. Uh, all the wiring in the car right now has been done by me, uh, but uh, it has been rebuilt a few times since we built it the first time, and that's why it looks a bit yeah, it's a bit uh, messy right now, but we're try gonna try to see if we have time to fix this in for the next season. But uh, we'll see how much time we have. Always a bit a l too little time when it comes to the off season, but uh, we'll see. So as you can see, we don't use any PDM or stuff like that. We have the regular relay box with the fuses and everything like that and uh, we also use the leash electronics uh, uh, box to control the uh, lights of the car it's a really easy and good way of uh, making it work because you have an ignition system inside of that that makes yeah you have only have to have an input from a button and then it's easy to work on well, uh, the next part I want to show you is the small control board we have here. It's definitely nothing fancy, but it does the work perfectly. Uh, so as you can see, we have like a small button for ignition, we have a start button, then we have some for the lights, the indicators and all of that good stuff. Uh, the red one that you see here goes to the fire extinguisher system that we have in the back. I will go over that in a future episode. And this is the main power kill switch that turns the car off if something would to happen. We also have a cable going outside of the car to make it possible for the yes, the guys out on track to kill the car if something would to knock me out. to the ECU. Uh, as you see here we're running an ECU called Mtron. Uh, this is a new setup for us uh, this year and uh, together with Autogruppen we made the swap earlier this year and uh, we're really happy about this system. Um, many of you in Scandinavia have probably never heard of Mtron but uh, they're not new to the market. They've been around for a few years and uh, they're really big in the time attack industry. Um, the company is based in Australia and uh, their kind of plan, in my opinion or as I understand it, is that they want to deliver a really powerful ECU uh, that combines everything in one. So instead of have buying one ECU and then have to add a box for a certain function or uh, buying a license for anti-lag or yeah whatever the reason may be uh, they wanted to compile everything into one unit and uh, get everything unlocked for a user so uh, we right now are not using the full potential of the ECU because there's uh, so many functions that uh, we can't support with the number of uh, the number of sensors we have today but uh, we're trying to evolve that together with Autogruppen and I think we have a uh, some few uh, modifications that we will do for next year. So we will go more in depth on this ECU and uh, that brand in uh, 
in a short t- period of time, I think. So uh, stay tuned for that. system we're using right now we have an aim dash from autogruppen uh, this is the mxs strada 1.2 uh, it's a pretty neat setup it's uh, clean and uh, yeah informative it gives it gives us the uh, values that we need and uh, has been working great for this us this year after we show you one cool feature so if you turn off the ignition completely and then you turn it on again then you get the uh, team love tip. Pretty sick. Uh, but this system will not stay in the car because we're changing to another brand for the 2020 season. And that is uh, this system. It is called the Smart Dash system. It's made by our partner C-Tune. Uh, it's a Norwegian company. Uh, we met them about two years ago uh, on a car show done in Malmö. And uh, they told us about this system and uh, we got uh, pretty interested right away. So they've been developing this system during the last years and uh, now it's on out on the market and uh, we're really stoked about trying this for the next season. So to explain a little bit of how the system works, it's uh, this control unit that you see here. It talks with the com- CAN bus to, uh, to the ECU. So you get all the values from the box, uh, from the ECU into the box. And uh, this is also connected to a GPS puck on the roof. It makes you get speed and you can also track out the track and get lap times and you can get uh, logging from uh, certain parts of the track and you can relay them where it happened on the track. Uh, then it's connected to this. You see this small LED bar here. Uh, this indicates of course uh, shift lights and also if you get any kind of alarm in the car so uh, otherwise oh, on top of that to get the uh, smart dash system I- by itself it's the connected via bluetooth to uh, their uh, app and uh, here you can see the app uh, this is just a simple uh, setup that i used uh, to show you this system so uh, here you can set up uh, everything you have in the ECU can be shown here, so that's pretty rad. And so the kind of philosophy behind this system is that if you're a driver, you should be focusing on just driving and doing your absolute best on track. You should not be looking at all the values, making sure the car is fine, the values, the oil pressure and all of that stuff. That should be left to the professionals in the pits or you should be aware when something is going uh, south or going bad then you have to be informed but otherwise you should not be worrying about uh, the values in the car so uh, the the idea is that you don't have a dash right in front of you like we have now uh, instead you have an iPad and uh, we're gonna be replacing a iPad mini here probably and uh, this is where you will be able to see all the data but uh, you will not have to check that unless the LED bar is flashing red because then you have an alarm and then you have some type of value <coughs> that has gone out of your comfort zone. So you said for each value that you want to observe or look at, you have the possibility of setting a low limit and a high limit. If it goes out of this li- this area, you will get a notification on the LED bar and then you can check on the iPad and it will say what what kind of value has gone out of the val- the range and also sh- show you the value that it is currently. So 
This is a really good way of just keeping the information to a minimum and you only get the information that is needed. So uh, pretty good setup. And uh, one all the, also the perks that this system have is that the, the loggings that you use will be sent up to a cloud function. So you never have to unload the logs yourself. So as long as the iPad or the phone that you have as a dash has a 4G connection, it will upload and sync these log files for you. So that's pretty good because you know, like me, that time is of an essence on every race weekend. So that's a good feature as well. One of the other things that uh, the 4G networks helps out with is that uh, all the values that I can get in my dash is also available for my mechanics in the, in the pit. So the values you see here, uh, I will just turn on the ignition so you can see the values live. Uh, the updates you see there. Uh, so all of these values are possible for my mechanics to see live. So they can get the telemetry through the 4G internet. And uh, that's pretty rad considering that uh, I could be here. Or 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 here and still be able to get the same data as I would behind the wheel of this car. Uh, I think Ctune did a really good job with this function and it's uh, so cool to see that it's that easy to make telemetry work for us uh, as a team. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as I told you, this was kind of a shallow walkthrough of the ECU system and the dash system. But uh, we will be sure to update you more in depth about this uh, during the off season and next year. So uh, make sure you share this episode with your friends, subscribe uh, to the channel and uh, we'll talk to you soon.